Hello arters, artists, and art appreciators. I'm Regina and today I have another art doll video and one that's kind of unexpected. I feel like you all deserve some context for this doll so here it is. I became obsessed with colorful triceratops. I kept drawing them. I wanted to make a doll. I immediately got impatient with the air dry process and decided to make a second smaller doll and that smaller doll is Baby Tops which took on a life of its own and then I decided to make this video. So here we are. The adult Triceratops you'll see is a different separate art doll that I haven't finished yet um, and you'll see her in the background of this video but this video is just about Baby Tops and I'll do a separate video for the adult Triceratops. Due to the small size of Baby Triceratops I used a thinner wire that I wrapped around a few times um, and I only used a little bit of foil in the head, making the feet directly out of clay as opposed to uh, wrapping them in foil and then clay like the head because the feet were just so small. I use a bit of wire to support the frill along with some foil just to kind of give myself a base to work off of and put little wires in the horn so I was able to adjust them while I was sculpting and while it was still wet. I made all of the triangles for the frill and I put them on one by one all at the same time so I could get them even and I started with one at the very top. I believe this is correct to a real triceratops that they were placed in an odd arrangement with one at the top and then two on either side going all the way down. I read that they usually have about 15 spikes on the frill. I am very impatient with air dry clay. It helped that I was working on the adult at the same time as the baby at this point. I cut up a torn quilt comforter for some scraps of fabric and I used that to wrap the body. But you'll see later on I used uh, gauze to wrap, again like my last two dolls because gauze just sticks to itself a lot better and uh, is less lumpy overall. You can see my little cutouts there on the table are also made of the same fabric from that one quilt. and. They are just sort of example pieces when I was trying to figure out how to shape the Triceratops body. Of course I knew I was going to make it out of fabric but I had very little idea what to start so I made these two tiny templates. The amount of times that Boo interrupted me during this project is so many I didn't put them all in the video <laughs> but is only um, superseded by the amount of times he interrupted me while I was trying to put together the footage for this video. I'm recording this at night so he's not in his meowy phase. He's taking his after dinner nap. I uh, was waffling about how the eyes would look but decided to use a small bead to make it more spherical and then I actually added a little bit more clay to give her an eyelid later on um, after deciding that it was a little bit too smooth around the eye. I only have a couple of sanding paper grits um, but the larger one did pretty much just fine for most of the smoothing. I tried using my glass nail file at one point which seems to have a smaller grit by touch but is actually seems to be a lot rougher because of what it's made out of and was actually better at getting out like larger bumps and things like that. You can see that the sandpaper smooths the surface pretty well but really exaggerates like divots and imperfections and so I ended up going over this like a few times filling in the divots and then letting it dry and then uh, sanding it again. 
I might have gone overboard with the sanding because it gets covered up by paint. I mean, everything does look very smooth in the end, so. So a lot of websites re recommended sealing the clay with some sort of glue. I did test wood glue per recommendation I saw online. And then I also had Elmer's glue, which some places say is fine. Um, it's more water soluble than PVA glue, which is what most places say you're supposed to use, but it's all I had on hand. I'm actually not sure if it was necessary to do all of that because um, I added like gesso and paint on top, so it was probably pretty well sealed in the end. Oh, I'll also note that uh, the beads, <laughs> the little beaded necklace that's on the Triceratops is for hanging it up while it was drying. I just didn't really know how to dry it otherwise. It's usually recommended if you're painting that you do like thin layers that are very watered down. But like I said, I'm really impatient. So I did a kind of method which was a uh, blob and then smooth. <laughs> and it actually worked surprisingly well. I just kind of laid the, the paint on, uh, or the gesso on really thickly and then smooth it out with a bit of water. And it, it turned out pretty well. It didn't turn out too streaky. Um, and this gets covered by paint again anyway, so. I did work on the fabric and sewing sort of concurrently with drying the layers of gesso and glue, but I put all the clips together to be a little bit cleaner. To trace out the design I made um, from the like little flimsy prototype and then with just pieces of paper, I used some blue pencil including a blue, um, mechanical pencil with blue lead, which worked pretty well since I couldn't find any tailor's chalk around here. I probably should have just folded over the fabric instead of cutting all the pieces individually also, but for some reason didn't. I also put Elmer's glue on the edges of all of the uh, fabric because I have had fabric unravel a lot on me, like in my first project. So I just did that so I didn't have to hem anything. I did make a lot of these pieces too big, which is not great when it gets to the sewing stage, but you'll see. <laughs> I started by sewing the top two pieces together with the good sides together, and then the tops of the leg pieces onto the sort of back portion. I then sewed the bottom of the leg pieces to the chest portion, um, which was very difficult and confusing, and I don't understand how to make sleeve holes. Um, I want to be very clear, I'm not very good at sewing, <laughs> and the only real sewing I've done is on my other art dolls. I didn't really look up any new tutorials, but um, to be honest, she's a bit asymmetrical, and the oversizedness didn't really help because one, one leg I think is a bit bigger than the other leg. Since the chest was a little too wide, I end up using a sort of ruffle technique on the chest to make it sort of a bit thinner, which is a technique I'm planning on using on the other dinosaur to make a sort of a more elaborate detail and texture to the fabric. So this was like a nice little test of that. I use the stall for like a lot of testing and there are just a lot of things that I know I need to change going into the bigger dinosaur doll. I pinned all the pieces just to the body and roughly the arrangement they should go, trying to turn the fabric inwards as opposed to like hemming it. Um, the other parts I mostly just stitched on in I think what is like a back stitch or a running stitch or a combination of them depending on how detailed I decided to be at that point. And then the body, I just used a ladder stitch or an invisible stitch to go all the way around the body. So like down the seams of the neck, down the seams of the leg to the seams of the other leg, the seams on the stomach, the seams on the back legs, and then the tail. Um, the tail gave me a lot of trouble and still um, I adjusted it a few times like until right before I filmed the end of this video and all the photo shoot because I made it a little bit chunky, um, so I do thin that out eventually. 
I, I mean, I still think it looks cute as kind of like a little rounded sort of baby tail, but um, I just, like I said, I think it was that bottom piece being too small that was the real problem out of all of the pieces. I also, after I finish this, I put some glue on the fabric just around the feet area to glue it down. Nothing too fancy, just a little bit of glue to put it down. A little kitty petting break, which kitty demands at all times. He loves both of my chairs and he believes that all of my chairs are his chairs. One of the more um, interesting, shall we say, uh, decisions I made was sewing the stall together and stuffing her prior to adding the decorations that you'll see in a minute. I'm definitely not doing that for the other Triceratops. I think I was just impatient to get to a stage where I felt like she looked more finished as opposed to um, really needing her to be stuffed at this point. I did leave that little hole by her leg so I could add the decorations that you'll see in a second. So I added that felt background earlier because while I was sewing around the doll, I um, I bumped the doll against the table several times, even causing like a little nar mark on her nose and stuff like that. So I decided that I would just put this little felt pad down and it actually was really helpful when it got to this beading stage um, because then the beads didn't roll away. So one of my original inspirations for this Triceratops, and the bigger Triceratops specifically, was reading that scale imprints were found for Triceratops that had sort of semi-hexagonal or poly polygonal scales, some of which had sort of bumps in the middle. Not all of them, but I, I kind of... This is just a play on that. I went with a mix of small beads and then like larger, larger beads for sort of the larger bumps. Um, this is very a loose interpretation of that those kind of scale imprints, but that's why, and that's kind of where I got the beaded idea. When I get to sewing embroidery thread on, I just follow the shape of the flowers because she already has these flowers and I use them to make like the nice hexagonal patterns. I wasn't sure exactly how painting would go for the doll, but I knew I just didn't want to make her the exact same color and pattern as the fabric. I had a few big ideas such as making a big half flower on her frill, and I knew I wanted her claws and horns to be probably gray or black. Um, so I kind of started with that in mind and tried to keep like the theme of the beads, like the darker gray bead and the shiny little silver beads in mind. I use a mechanical pencil with blue colored lead for a lot of sketching, including all the sketching on her face, because, man, this, I just really like these uh, colored leads that I have. They're much better than pencils, in my opinion. I hate colored pencils, like classical, like wooden ones and stuff like that. I hate, um, I don't like sharpening them. <laughs> 
I tried to take elements from the fabric pattern, like the little stems and the shapes of the flowers, and sort of elaborated them and added leaves to the design, and also added some more detailed scales along her chin and, uh, and along her feet. When I was painting the doll, that's when I realized that she would really need to be her own video, because it took me so long to paint her. It took me like three days of, I mean, like a decent amount of work each day. I mean, like literally like six hours straight the first day. I tried to start with really thin layers of watered down paint, which worked well for the gradient on her head. Although later, as I try to build up opacity, um, I admit I get a little bit thicker with a lot of the paint. Um, but I was proud of myself. Like I said, I'm very impatient and doing many layers of thin coats is not my idea of fun time. And this already took a very long time. I started off with a very blue base on the frill and then realized the fabric is much more teal. So I do end up going in and adding more green and blending it in with the blue and going for like a, like a dark blue, but then contrasting with teal in various areas, sort of palette. Filming the scales underneath her chin and the scales that I eventually put on her feet is probably one of the most frustrating parts. And I I guess I could apologize for the odd angles. I'm working on them. I really am. I actually really hurt my back the first day I worked on this doll from sitting bent over like that for like five hours trying to get these tiny details on camera. So I know that like for my own sake, as well as for the making better videos sake, I need to figure out how to um, set everything up. And the angles in this video only get kind of weirder from here. A lot of painting really took place like me holding this very close to my face. So either I had to get closer to the camera and hurt my back or I had to like hold it up to my face and the camera's in a really weird position. To show you exactly how slow it took me to do these, the clip of me painting the little circle on her cheek, one of them is at 200% and then the other on the opposite cheek is at 100%. So you can really get a feel for how, how long it took me to paint one circle. It was like, it was a solid few seconds. Um, and, and that was a lot of these things was going very slowly. So a lot of this footage is sped up by just 200 or 100%. I feel like subtly sped up videos can really make you forget just how long it can take to paint. Um, at least for me, I'm not like the most experienced painter. Uh, these silver patterns are similar to, there's going to be some metallic paint on the adult triceratops, so I knew I had to add some metallics to be similar to the adult triceratops. And then they also sort of reflect the beads that are on her back, so she's not just entirely matte on her face and then sort of has the shiny beads on her back. I think the metallic horns, um, as well as the metallic claws, sort of bring it together a little bit better. The doll... I had a lot of trouble with figuring out how to uh, hold her up while I was painting her as well. So she's sort of tied to a little candle for a little bit of this video as I was trying to paint all of her feet at once and also not get paint everywhere and also not um, not have to like flip her over or bump her against every anything. Really the best technique was just me holding her, but it was just so hard to get footage of me painting while I was holding her because of, like I said, just the reality of painting on a teeny tiny little doll is much harder than I realized it would be, I guess. So you can see her little nail polish is one of the last things to go. 
as well as her beak, which is a sort of complementary yellow color, which is more similar to the sort of shiny clearish yellow of the beads on her back. It's a little bit of a contrast, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it, but I think at least it adds like like a a little a little touch. A little touch of color. And of course, I made that one um a little bit shimmery as well. It's just a little bit of And with a few coats of incredibly watered down uh, matte varnish, she is complete. So that's the video. I hope you like Triceratops Baby, Baby Tops, as much as I do. Even if you like her half as much as I do, I'd be happy, honestly, because I love her despite uh, the inner, inexpert quality at some things. I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like she turned out as good, honestly, like better than I imagined that she could be. You know, she's not the first thing people think of when they think of an art doll or the first thing people think of when they think of a Triceratops. But I hope that she brings you some joy. I hope you liked this video. And please like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you want to.